pagination is an important feature that most of the applications need to have, especially when you are listing things. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add pagination in your ASP.NET Core projects. I am using here my forum project that I did in a previous video of this series. We will firstly create the paginated list class and then we will need to work with it in our index method and in the index view page. So let's start now. So firstly, let's go to our root project folder and we'll add their class. I will name it paginated list dot cs we'll create it and, and firstly what we need to do is to make our class into a generic class which basically means that it takes a parameter which is of an unidentified uh, data type and it will inherit from the list class, which will also be a generic class. Next, we'll need to create a couple properties to hold the page index and the total pages of the application. So a public int of the name is page index. And in these two properties, we'll need to, to make the set attribute to private because by doing so, what it does, uh, it makes it uh, not accessible from outside this class. So from outside, from outside this class, we cannot change these two properties. Next, we need to define a constructor. We'll name it paginated list as the name of the class. And it will take as a parameter a list, a generic list. I name it items, which will help all the items of the list. And we need an count parameter which will have all the number uh, the number of every of the entire items that we need a page index for the index of the page and the page size parameter to to tell us uh, how many items will be in a single page and here we'll define the page index property and next, to define the total pages property, we'll need to, to cast the expression to int firstly. Then we'll need to write this math.ceiling method here, which basically what it does, it rounds the expression to the next full integer. And because this method because this method only works with decimals or uh, doubles, here we'll need to cast one of our two. Uh, so we, we will cast here the page size to double so that the math.ceiling function works. And the reason why we will divide the count by the page size is because it will give us the number of the total pages of the application. Next. Uh, we'll write we, by writing this dot add range. It's a method that adds the items that we'll take in, in the constructor. These items will be added to our paginated list. Next, we'll need a couple of other properties of Boolean properties to tell us if we need if the previous and the next button in the paginating view that we will see later. Uh, so this will tell us if the page that we are currently in has a previous page or a next page. So if the page index is uh, greater than one, then the page has a previous page and this uh, property will be true. 
and in, uh, in our has next page property, this property will be true in case the page index is smaller than the total pages of the application. Next, we'll need to write an other uh, method here, which will be an async await method. This will take a paginated list, a generic one, and uh, we'll name it cre create async and as parameters it will take firstly an iQueryable collection a generic collection uh, and name it source this source variable here will just take what we will import from the context which we'll see in the in the in the controller a bit later it will take the page index it will take then the page size the size of our page let me just fix this a bit Next here, uh, we'll define a couple of uh, variables. In the count variable, we will take uh, we'll take from the source collection that we take from this parameter. We'll take the count. We'll use the count async method that will uh, tell us the entire number of the elements of this collection. And in the items variable here, we will take in our current page, the, the exact elements that we need. So firstly, we will write a skip method, which basically will skip all the items that lead to our current page. So we will use this expression page index minus one. So all the items that are before our current page times the, the page size so we, this way we will just skip all the number of items that come before our page that we are currently in and then we, we will take in the page that we are currently in we will take as much items as the page size and then to list async to list this items that we have here and uh, lastly this method will return a paginated list. A new will create a new paginated list object, which will have as parameters of the items, the count, and all these variables that we had here. So the page index, the and the page size. Next. Uh, we should go to our controller, in my case it's the questions controller, and in the index method, we'll go firstly to the index, we'll, go, we'll need only to go to the index method, and here we'll take as a parameter uh, an int variable, we'll set it to, to, to be possible to be nullable with a question mark, And we'll name it the page number. So uh, if the page number by default will be not null, so that uh, we'll later make it. So if it's null, we'll just print the first page. And here, uh, in this variable here, we'll take the questions from the context. What we need to do next is firstly, we need to set uh, a number for the page size. In my case, I'll just make it three. So is three is the number of items that will be displayed in a single page. 
And then here I just need to modify the return view here. It will return a paginated list. It was a, this will take a question as a parameter because we will return questions. And we will here use the create async method that we created in our paginated list class, which if you remember, takes a collection of I queryable, which is this application DB context that we take from the context. And we'll write here a method as no checking, which basically just means just an optimate uh, it's just a method to optimize the query that we take from the context. You don't need to focus on that so much. If we go to the paginated list, we'll see here that the create async method that we created takes an I queryable object, and then it takes a page index and the page size. And this is the method that we were using in the controller here. The page index will be the page number. If it's not null, it will be one. So by default, it's null. If we enter the first page and it will display the first page and then the page size that we set to three. So this method will re return a paginated list and that's with these parameters and that's why when we go to the index view page on top of it we will need to make it as a paginated list the model that we import firstly what we need here we need a couple of variables so from the model we will take a couple of variables to show us if we will need to disable or enable our next and our previous buttons. So if the model that has previous page, which was the property, the Boolean property that we cre created in the paginated list class. So if it is not null, so if it is false, then we will make this uh, disabled. And if it's true, then it will have nothing. We will actually use these variables uh, a bit below and you will see that uh, this variable will be the name of the class that we input to the buttons. So basically, if the model has a previous page, it will not take a class. But if the model has a previous page or a next page, if it doesn't have them, then they will be disabled. The buttons will be disabled. Here I'm writing a div and here I'm inputting a couple of anchor tags. The first one will be for, to the index section. Both, the both of them will be, will take an ASP action to the index. So the route asp route page number will set will take the number that the index action takes in the parameters it will take the page number and in this case when we click our previous button this will take us to the model to the model that page index but to the previous page so minus one And the class of it will make it a button, a button default. And here you will see the use of our variables above. So it will take the previous disabled variable. So if the button 
is disabled, it will take a disabled property, a string disabled property, and the button won't be clickable. I'm writing in between the anchor tags previous here. And pretty much the same thing, I'm, I'll change a few things for the next button. So it will take us to the page index plus one. And it will take as a class this next disabled variable. So the anchor tag will be enabled if the page has a next page and it will be disabled if it hasn't one. So here in between the anchor tags, I can write a div element where I just write a text that shows us, for example, the page and will take the actual from the model that page index. So for example, page two out of five, page one out of three. So I'll take at model that page index of uh, at model that total pages. I think I'm going to have to fix later a little bit the display, but as for now, I, I'll just run the application first to check it out. Here we have it, but Okay, they are not displayed as beautifully as we wanted them. I think the next button works, but the previous button doesn't work. I'm just making them to be in a straight line firstly. So I'll give the div a class of deflex. And then the justify content center class, which will basically just put all of our elements in, a, in the middle of the page. As you can see, the previous button doesn't work. If we'll go to the paginated list class. We'll see here we have a logic uh, error here so the has previous page should be true in case the page index is greater to one greater than one not smaller than one so if we load the page here one more time so we'll see that both of the buttons work actually the next button works and the previous now is enabled but here we can see that they don't look as well displayed because there are two buttons and one just text so i'll make the div here i'll give the div here a class of button but i don't it shouldn't be clickable i'll give the in the styling, the cursor, I'm setting it to default. I'm going to run this one more time. So the elements now are more centered and they look a, a bit better. The functionality is there, so both buttons work. So this was it for this video. This was Pagination in ASP.NET Core. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Have a great day and I will see you soon.